Hi folks, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to do a relatively brief example of a cart that is rolling via a wheel. The reason for doing this is as a warm-up to doing more complex dynamic system models where you have cart and wheels and rods and motors and all kinds of things. The other reason for doing it is it perhaps demystifies one of those things that you may have heard in other problems where folks will draw a picture of some system and want you to analyze it and they say that it's sliding on a frictionless surface, the mythical frictionless surface. Well, it's actually not that mythical and you'll see why that is hopefully via this example. So here's a cart it's, I'm going to call it the lucky cart because everything is just very nicely designed. We have this rectangular cart and a wheel and the center of mass of the cart is at that blue circle and that's also the center of the wheel. And the force is going right through that center of mass. The cart has mass mc and mass moment of inertia jc. And th this is a plane motion example, by the way. So that's the jc about the axis popping out of the board. And the wheel has a mass and some mass moment of inertia. And again, this is the mass center. Let's use this as a coordinate frame. Got x going to the right, y down, and let's say positive rotation of anything that's rotating is going to be sort of into the page. Let's do some free body diagrams. We have two of them. And for the cart, I'm going to, at this point, say that, well, it could be rotating, right? Because there's just that one wheel there, kind of like a unicart. And it certainly is going to translate uh, to the right. Now I've only shown one variable of motion for the wheel, but actually the wheel is also translating, but we'll call that um, x also. And let's introduce one little assumption at this point, we'll do some more later, but let's say there's no axle friction. And we'll revisit that assumption at the very end of this problem. So here's our inertial force on the cart in the opposite direction of what we've deemed as being positive displacement and there's the inertial moment again in the opposite direction of positive theta c oh and here's the external force that's the easy one and we have the weight of the cart and some reaction forces that are acting at that axle location an rx and an ry and of course we have equal and opposite on the wheel so might as well put those on at this point and then just move to the wheel so we have the inertial moment of it and an inertial force due to its acceleration in the, uh, to the right and the weight of the wheel and a normal force from the ground to the wheel. We also have the traction force which keeps everything rolling. Now let's do the uh, some of the forces and the some of the moments. We'll do it for each of these bodies but let's do the cart first. So here's the sum of the forces in the x, including the inertial forces, of course. And so we have the inertial force and the reaction force Rx and that applied force, the externally applied force F. Now we do the y direction summation and all we have is the weight of the cart and the reaction force at the axle. Then we can do sort of the easiest one for it, which is the rotation. And here we're starting to reveal what's actually happening. Because jc theta c double dot is zero, we now know that the cart isn't rotating. But we'll get into those sorts of uh, analyses in just a minute. Now let's go after the wheel. X direction, there's our inertial force and the reaction force at the axle and the traction force. Do the y. We have the reaction force, a weight, and a normal force. And finally, the summation of the moments about the center of mass. There's our inertial moment and the traction force going through some distance r. And I guess I didn't mention that at the beginning of the problem, but let's say that the radius of the wheel is just little r. We'll label these with some numbers. And now let's introduce some additional assumptions and that will lead us into some kinematic relationships. 
So one of the main assumptions that we're going to use here is that the wheel is actually massless, or at least it's negligible compared to that of the cart, which means that MW and JW are both equal to zero. The other assumption is that it's rolling without slip. And again, we'll revisit this at the very end and see what happens if we relax that a little bit. But anyway, that gives us this kinematic relationship that x is equal to r theta. Now let's pick apart these equations and do some analysis. So for 1c, as I mentioned before, the cart doesn't tip. So that's why it's lucky. Also, if we go over to 2c, we can see that because jw is equal to 0, it also means that the traction force is equal to 0. And if we look at equation 2a and we start unraveling some of these other goodies, then we can see that because mw is 0 and ft is 0, that our x is 0. Now moving over to 1a, back to the cart, since rx is 0, we just have mc x double dot is equal to f. And this is one of the first glimpses as to how this example of a cart and a wheel with some simplifying assumptions starts looking like a block that is sliding on a frictionless surface. And if we go back to the wheel and have a look at 2b, we can see that ry is just equal to n because mw is 0. And then going back to the cart, we can substitute ry for n, and we just get uh, that n is equal to the weight of the cart. So here's a conclusion that if we use these simplifying assumptions, then the cart with a massless wheel starts looking very much like, or equivalent to, a block sliding on a frictionless surface. So next time someone throws something at you that says, let's look at this on a frictionless surface sliding around, you can always think of it as being wheeled, and the wheels are just massless compared to that block. So it would look like this. Now, imagine that there's a little bit of friction at that wheel. So way back in my little um, cloud thing on the left, I said that there's no axle friction. But imagine now that there is just a little bit of axle friction. A lot of things change as soon as that happens. Now, I'll let you go ahead and work that out for yourself. But the sort of things that happen is that there is now a moment, if you go back to the free body diagrams, on both the wheel and the cart, equal and opposite moment due to the friction. And so the cart is actually going to rotate. And so now it becomes an unlucky cart. Now, if you had multiple wheels on that cart, then, of course, the cart wouldn't rotate. It would be constrained. And then what happens is you can show that that axle friction will reveal itself onto this cart, this block sliding on a frictionless surface as just a damping term, a CX dot, for instance. Another thing to point out that's really important if you have some axle damping in there is that the traction force will no longer be zero it's going to be equal to some constant times x dot. Now, of course, the maximum that that traction force can be, such that there is no slip, would be mu s, the static coefficient of friction, times the normal force. So you would need to check that that traction force is indeed less than mu n. Otherwise, you'll have to consider uh, some slip. But those are details that you can explore on your own using some principles from dynamics that you've likely studied before. So in summary, just a real basic example of a dynamic system that's both translating and rotating, and hopefully demystifying or giving some additional meaning to this notion of sliding on a frictionless surface. So I hope that helped. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.